Good afternoon, everyone. U.S. Mint stepping up coin production. Maybe there won't be a shortage. Riding on the heels of the ECB, Italy approves central bank digital currency. Digital dollars are next. Abandoned malls being turned into hybrid apartment housing. How about we turn it into vertical agriculture so we can eat? Chinese scientist, urban heat island, bigger the city, the more heat it radiates. Who would have ever guessed? In this day and age, it's so important to keep your body functioning at optimal performance. And collagen may be the closest thing we get to a real fountain of youth. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and essentially the glue that holds it all together. When you're middle-aged, you're only producing half of the collagen that you did in your youth. My focus is about digestive health because the change in our diets from foods being unavailable, moving to seasonal availability of foods, and the entire spectrum of availability of foods changing. There's so much more to talk about with the benefits of collagen. You can visit healthwithadapt2030.com to learn more. The link's to the description box below. I've been following the coin shortage for about six weeks here, off and on through the channel. Circulation of coins across the U.S. economy ground to a halt. People were saving them, not enough disbursement of change. People were afraid to touch change, so it created a shortage. Maybe you've seen some of these signs around. I see them everywhere now. Looks like the U.S. Mint took a note. Suddenly, they're going to ramp up production. Too many people asking too many questions, apparently. So to kick the can down the road just a sliver longer, the Mint's going to pump up production. And here's an interesting factoid. I saw a group of millionaires buying millions and millions of dollars worth of nickels. Perhaps coins will be used if bills are unavailable on a reset. Perhaps we'll just knock a zero off. Not sure. And staying on currency, central bank digital currency, CBDC. This is vocabulary you are definitely going to need to know, and it's going to start making its way to the forefront about September. European Central Bank allowing Italy now to experiment related to digital coins and crypto assets. So you know if the European Central Bank is already allowing Italy, it's a full mechanism that's just being tested, just like the Canadian dollar, the CAD dollar, just like the Fed coin. We're all going digital stimulus checks and everything in between. So keep it on your radar through the manifestation of September and October when you hear about this daily. And another sign of contraction across the economy, malls are now being engineered to turn into hybrid apartment housing. What they find is they can create a small ecosystem city within the 90 plus thousand square feet of retail. I'm thinking about parking garages and different areas itself that could be turned into food growth centers. I think this is going to be a massive new industry, bringing agriculture indoor and outfitting these defunct malls, shopping malls, whatever it is, and turning it into vertical ag indoor. And what some of the architects here are looking at, 300 apartment units, central, with all the peripheries on the side, coffee shops, little restaurants, cafes, and whatnot. But where will the food come from? Why don't we design it the other way around? Food first, housing second, business third. Imagine a full parking garage where we could produce our own grains and plants just like this. And staying in the cities, urban heat island. You've heard of this before, right? Sun comes down, sun strikes asphalt and concrete. That holds heat, builds up, you get a higher heat signature of anywhere from three degrees to five degrees Fahrenheit in cities compared to the countryside because plants radiate heat, asphalt doesn't as quickly. We have the rural landscapes all the way into the mega cities and everything in between. So Chinese scientists wanted to figure out this climate warming and heat island effect. And guess what? Not shockingly, the rate of huge cities and megalopolises had a signature significantly higher than those of medium size and small cities. So they focused on the East Coast here, 41 different cities across three different provinces. And what they did was they measured the size of the city with the heat signature based on the averages starting back in 1900. And they were getting their data from that point forward to see if there was really an effect on the overall warming based on cities in a regional area. So these are the 41 cities that are referenced in the study here, all the way from Shanghai, which is a major one. We all know about that in Zhejiang and Jiangsu province. Some of the smaller towns you might not have heard of, like Jinhua or Dinghai. You know, these are not really major cities, but they are in China. Hangzhou would be another one that you know, major city there. Nanjing, the former capital back in the day. 
So they did a full range from small to medium to large to megalopolis, Shanghai, for example. And here are the results for you. Small cities only one degree rise, megalopolis, large cities up to three degrees Celsius. But that would be expected, right? With the radiative forcing and the heat trapped by cities and exhaust and all those other factories and power plants and everything in between, hot air conditioners, for example, on the top office buildings. I hear repeatedly about this is the fastest it's ever changed. And all I would say is go back to the Younger Dryas event and we can see massive changes there. Something so far beyond what we can comprehend that it would be a society ending event if it happened this fast. But this was only what, 12,000 years ago? You don't have to go very far back in history to take a look where we got set back. And the 8200 year event, that was another one where we were pulled back due to substantial cooling. And we're way over at the right over here where it says little ice age, we're popping out of that. So look back in time. Do you really think we're so far out of the ordinary? Looks like the planet's getting ready to cool again here for some amount of time, decades, that's going to affect our agriculture. So perhaps all the collapsing economy and purposeful implosion of the world global financial system is because it needs a reset because we're back at this same point of instant change again. Maybe these are the questions we should be talking about and asking, which I talk about all the time on my Patreon channel forward slash adapt 2030. Fingerprints to the grand solar minimum decreased crop yields, volcanic eruptions, colder temperatures, all happening right now. And the media is trying to deflect you away from looking at any of these by distracting you with glossy images. And all the links for tonight's stories are in the description box below the video, so you can do more of your own research. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I'll see you next time.